say we N I double G E R. We are much more. Still, we choose to ignore the obvious. Man, this history don't acknowledge us. We were scholars long before colleges. They say we N I double G E R. We are well, much this more. This God Kia Life production. We got Brother Smalls out here with us today. Another great day. The weather's getting better, Brother Smalls. It is. It is. Thought I'd take a drive out to my sister's. This is uh, New High Park, Long Island. Uh, we're in her backyard. We thought we'd just enjoy some of this beautiful weather as we do this upload. Uh, as we start to get the season going with summer. It's finally here. Real talk. Real talk, man. And um, one of the topics, you know, we got to start off is something we was talking about earlier last week. Mm -hmm. Uh, was the Bill Cosby case. You mm -hmm. know, we talked about the case being reopened. And, yes, yes. And uh, him facing allegations. And recently he was found guilty. Right, right. Of the charges and mm -hmm. everything like that. And they say he's facing up to 30 years in prison. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, 86 years old. Um, mm, mm. <laughs> you know, um, America's father. We were talking mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. all that. We made all the points mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm, um, mm hmm, mm hmm. Before, you know, I, I didn't think it was going to, you know, personally, I didn't feel like he would have been found guilty. Right. Going into this because of all the things, you know, coming, you know, being accused mm -hmm. of and him actually go, so many years not having to face any type of situations mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. being guilty of any of that before. But right. now it seems like, you know, they changed the, a lot of things just for his case to make it special. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, there's a lot of different, you know, legal maneuverings that took place to bring this case about. First of all, just to give a little history for those who may not know some of the background to this, the DA, prior to the DA that bought this case, because the DAs are the ones that decide, okay, there's enough evidence to move forward, there's not enough evidence to move forward. So the DA, prior to the one that holds the office that opened the case against uh, Bill Cosby, said he was not going to move forward with the case because there was not enough evidence and, and even the evidence being looked at the interesting dynamic to the woman who was successful in in winning this case against him was that she filed first a criminal uh complaint against him which was considered by the D da prior to the one that's in now and said okay there's not enough muster she immediately or within a, a relatively short time frame filed a civil complaint now the civil complaint did go forward and to all accounts, she was successful by, and I say successful in that she won um, a payment. I think it was $3.2 million or something in that ballpark. Now, with that, normally goes, you know, that's kind of hush money. That's here, okay, we're not going to admit wrong, but we're going to satisfy your uh, the harm that was caused. I mean, the language is generally very detailed, and they usually say you are not able to speak about this or go forward. Now, what I'm hearing from some of, some of the legal talk, talking heads on the radio program was that uh, Bill Cosby's legal team might have been incompetent in some respects and not seeing to that his, de his deposition was sealed because that was what left the door open because in that deposition, he admitted to, uh, to, to drugging this woman with the the goal of having sex with her to make her unable to uh, defend herself or to deny his his advances so I mean there's no more classical uh, definition of rape than that so 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 that that's where we are now so it's not the speculation any further to to a degree at least in this case mm -hmm. who's lying who's not lying this deposition is him stating yes I am going on record that I did X Y and Z I did give this person a drug unsuspectingly in order to induce less uh, cohesiveness that allowed him to uh, sexually assault the woman. So he is stating that in this deposition that was not sealed by his legal team. That being reviewed by the, uh, the, the, the DA that got into office. And another little interesting thing that I thought, it's just, it's just some of these rogue folks in, in the, the legal field, the, the court reporter, from what I'm hearing, was the one that came forward with the information under the guise of there's no real restriction on me going public with it when there really was. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe, I don't know, there was some penalty, she might have lost a job or whatever. But what I think is what's going on is people are calculating. What is the loss? 
uh, even with the woman that brought the charges against uh, Donald Trump. Uh, what was it? Flowers? Not Flowers. The, the ex-porn star. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and again, she had a judgment. She got the hush money. But I guess they're saying, even if I have to give the hush money, the money I'll make with the publicity, with the book I'm going to make, with the movie that's coming. Mm -hmm. So they're probably saying, hey, if they sue me and I have to give that back, I'm going to make five, ten times that on the back end. So I'm, I'm seeing this accuser in a, in, a, in a similar in a similar way. Now, rape is rape. So the crime is obviously admitted to and it's been committed and there has to be uh, penalties for that activity without question. Mm -hmm. That you couldn't be a civilized society without penalties when there are members of a society that attack or in some way abuse other members. But it seems to be different rulers for different situations. You know, we're waiting for, you know, the Weinstein shoe to drop. Tom, Donald Trump has, has an excess of 20, 30, 40. How many accusers have come forward about him? Mm -hmm. He has not even been charged, indicted. I mean, he's been going through the mill in the public uh, 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 arena, but that doesn't even seem. He's almost like Teflon Don. Mm -hmm. You know, he's trucking. And, yeah, his presidency seems to be right, right on course, where we have a man who, for all intents and purposes, was in retirement mm -hmm. as far as a career and uh, his health is questionable. Vision, he's legally blind. So at this point in his life, what what example can be made by having this man spend the remainder of his life in 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 a prison? And, and that's what we're looking at now. But and just r quickly, I want to kick it back to you with any other questions you have about that knowledge of God. There's some other out, uh, standouts. There was a juror that was saying prior to the case even getting started was uh, said to have exclaimed out openly for others to hear, hey, why are we wasting this time? Mm -hmm. You know, this man is guilty. Mm -hmm. Why don't we just, you know, now if that's the mindset of a juror and he's already, he or she, I'm not sure if it's a male or mm -hmm. female, you, spewing that, even possibly contaminating other jurors, yeah. that almost on, on, on itself is grounds for, I don't know if a mistrial or a retrial or I don't know what the next legal step is, but so many other little oddities that took place that you would think a person that is due due process and we all are done uh, or do due process without due process we're back to what uh, this country has a history of the lynch mob they put you in jail until they get the mob together and they snatch you out and go you know have you strung up somewhere and that's almost has taken on the air of that with the kind of maneuverings they did for this man to be one bought bought to trial and then uh Found, found guilty at this time. And someone else said, I don't know if I fully agree with this, but someone else said she was paid off. His his attacks against her, she agreed on what was a settlement for that. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I was hurt. Give me this to satisfy the injury and pain you caused me, and this matter is closed. Now, you, people can say, okay, that's a good way to deal with that, whatever. That's an agreement you made to go after that, then to go back after the same man that you did come to an agreement with based on the harm that was done to you. You know, we can't call it double jeopardy because it is in two different legal spheres. One is civil and one is criminal. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, whoa. I, I mean, <laughs> gee whiz. You, yeah. you think you made amends for, for an offense and, and then the same offense or the same person that you offended is now having a second shot at coming back to to uh, exact revenge, to make you pay more. Yeah, I, I, get more so, money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that part of it, I'm trying to understand that. And, and I don't, rape is, the rape, murder probably a little ahead of rape, but one of the worst acti crimes that you can commit against another human being. So not trying to belittle the offense, but if someone has brought a complaint and to a person that has said, okay, what would satisfy this? And you put a number on the table, one million, 10 million, 50 million, and they satisfy that, then you walk away and come back. and like, okay, I got that. And I still want to come back and make this an issue. It's, you know, what do you, what do you think? Do you think she should have just kept on going and to whatever her satisfaction? I mean, just speaking on the case, um, Bill Cosby seemed like he was already guilty in public opinion. Mm, mm, mm. And um, anybody who could be a juror, I don't know how they wouldn't be contaminated just mm. by it, the case being so high profile. Right, right, right. So in a right. sense, he kind of was, and like you said, his de deposition alone yeah, was became yeah, public. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. he was like in the minutes of... Of right, it, it is. It you know what I'm so, so it's not so even it's a matter like, of who's lying. In his, yeah, in this case, in this case, yeah, and I'm sure there's a whole bunch of them in there just trying to, you know, 
get 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 some bucks out of it and then there are true victims but in this case there's no dispute as okay she lying he's admitted to what was, yeah, was so, he's been accused of like, yeah so now that he's done that it's like you know it's, i just look at it as you know life is karma whatever mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. you're getting you know mm -hmm. you're 86 so Hey, you could deal the rest of your life and, you know, have to deal with whatever yeah, yeah. decisions you've made. You uh -huh, know what I'm uh -huh. saying? Another and, case that I think parallels that in, in the age respect and paying your penalties at, uh, did you did you hear about the Golden State yeah, killer? Yeah, I heard about it. And definitely. how is he an elderly gentleman now, uh, I believe in his 70s, that was through DNA scientific uh, uh, findings was determined to be the Golden State Killer, the, the person who terrorized uh, communities in California during the 70s, 60s, the 70s and 80s primarily, uh, with 12 murders, over 50 brutal rapes. And each time they describe, they always put the term brutal. brutal. So this was somebody who it wasn't. It, this was, you, you know, one of those 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 rarities of of. of of, of almost animals walking on two feet. Mm. This man w was, was breaking into people's homes, uh, committing these acts, and then in few instances, he stayed in touch with the victims. That's he crazy. would call and, 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 and leave How threatening he... messages and stuff. So this is a person that, aside from the physical horrendous act, mm. now I want to psychologically traumatized this person so this is a person that you know that's working on, on with some evil energies this is some some demonic inspirations that's driving this person guess what profession he held for over 10 years in two american counties no uh, one he, he was a police officer <laughs> yeah, policeman he's the one you for call 10 help. years yes now i think right off top our community, we need to review every single case this man had any participation in. Because it's clear and evident now, if it wasn't then, it's clear now he was not psychologically stable. Mm -hmm. This man, a straight up serial killer, yeah. psychopath. <laughs> so if he had those inclinations that led to 50 plus rapes, 12 murders, how else was he exacting that kind of hate and that kind of anger towards other members of the population that he had now a badge and a gun to supervise? So I think as as a black community, that needs to be first thing on the table. Okay, who did he arrest? When did he arrest? Uh, what were the circumstances? Mm -hmm. uh, was there any acts of brutality? And, and does he have any sh any shootings on on his record? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and so all that needs needs to needs to be reviewed. I think from our perspective. So again, an elderly man. They had his court his court appearance. Unless he's doing a a, a Vinny, Vinny the Chin move. You know, for those who are not from New York, Benny the Chin, uh, he was one of the uh, uh, crime bosses here in New York. He was the head of one of the, the five crime families. Uh, I think there's the Gambino, the Genovese. Mm -hmm. I don't know all of all, all of the names, but he was the head. Now, he, you know, was crazy like a fox. He kept uh, the law enforcement and the judicial system at bay by putting on this elaborate act that he was crazy. And it was complete with, you know, uh, 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 a bathrobe that he would walk outside with, talk to parking meters. He was often <laughs> seen, you know, gesturing in the air. You know, many say this was just uh, uh, a performance. But so this elderly, you know, white man, serial killer, barely audible in, in speech. He's rolled in in a wheelchair. So, again, he's in his latter stages of life. He's okay. an elderly man. So. But he brutally, How did they find out he was the one? Uh, it, it was interesting. There was there's this public D, DNA kind of bank that you as a person could participate in by putting your DA providing your DNA for public uh, display to others trying to connect to see if there's some kind of family or there's a lineage connection. Okay. So someone in this person's family participated in. Now he never did, but they got a close enough match from these relatives that appointed fingers to him. So they had to get a sample from him to confirm it. And I don't know if it was a discarded cigarette butt or a cup that he drank from, but there was something that got his DNA that law enforcement uh, personnel was able to secure test. And then they gave unquestionable uh, verification that this man was that homicidal serial killer. Yeah, yeah. 
20, 30 years? Yes, yes. I mean, and, 30, 40 years. Oh, my goodness. And the thing, I think he used his knowledge in law enforcement. That's what evaded. He didn't leave the normal prints. He didn't make the, the regular mistakes yeah, that yeah. these guys make. So they couldn't catch because he, he knew what the crime lab was coming I, to see. I, I don't know if you ever saw the show called Dexter. Uh, that was, he was a morgue person and he yeah, dealt with dope. I never saw it, but I saw the ads. He basically would come in with the police and, you know, you know, give them analysis or what happened with the body. Whoa. But he was a straight up serial killer. But he worked with the police. That's but deep. he would kill every right. opportunity. He had like a, something in him that made him want to kill people. That's kind you of know, big. and he, he said, you know, if, uh, he'd go after, try to go after bad people for the most part. But, you know. But if it wasn't nothing around, I got to yeah, you know you gotta go. feed the urge and, you know. <laughs> I be, I'm laughing. That's kind of, I, mean, I, I, I mean, how many seasons it, did that do? I like mean, how long seasons. did what? Yeah, it, went, it went for a long time. And I'm like, yo, this is a crazy show. And the the point of the, the point of the show was you had sympathy or, I guess, empathy or whatever for him. Because you watching the show, he was kind of like a hero. But, you know, he's a straight psycho you know, Man. killer. But you kind of like feel for him because some of those people, you're like, yeah, you know, he kind of, you know, he's in the right for killing this one. Okay. You know, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. It's it, 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 it's that type of show, but it, it shows that like, you know, these people do exist. You know mm -hmm, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, it might seem like a character or a movie, but you got the real life version of Dexter right there walking around raping and I, killing I mean, people. But, uh, but at least in that storyline, they're making an attempt to kind of save him, him as making him going after bad people. You know, this man was breaking into people's homes. Yeah, he is. You crazy. know, this man had, there's no redemption to his acts at all. That's but crazy. but I do see, but but look at what they do with the imagery. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I remember the, the ads, they had Subway posters and they had like... A dead hand. He had one dead hand. He had his chin yeah, and a yeah, dead yeah, hand. Yeah, yeah. They had this other thing with a scalpel and yeah, blood that was coming. In. And I was saying, like, what are they promoting? Yeah, he had a whole kill room and everything. Oh, my goodness. And he couldn't get caught because he knew how to clean the crime Right, clean. right. But what what is that teaching the society that is absorbing? I mean, what is that doing to our value, values, knowingly or unknowingly? Mm. We're now rooting for a, a, a serial killer. Yes, exactly. You know, it's just, and that's what I'm saying. That's the mentality where they're trying to humanize this guy, mm, make mm. him feel like, okay, yeah, he does it, but he has his reasons, and you know, yeah, I, I don't. That's <laughs> inexcusable. But two examples of men in their elder years. One DNA has vir virtually confirmed he's doing a, a trial. So he's still innocent until proven guilty, but the evidence is practically indisputable. And mm. then we we, ha we have our, our brother, our brother Cosby, who has o admitted in, de in deposition to engage in an act that are clearly rape. The other I listen to, you know, one of the shows I listen to all the time, Open Line, and they they yes. had a very good sister uh, with a legal background on there that. He broke down a lot of details, and, and even aside from that, it went into, I mean, his, his legacy, his legacy, his legacy. I mean, look at what he did. Look how many doors he opened, mm -hmm. uh, and he was a philanthropic spirit. Look at all the schools he gave that mm -hmm. by, coincidentally, they wanted to distance themselves from him, but they didn't distance themselves from that money he gave. Not, not a single school, to my oh, knowledge, yeah, yeah. returned any of the money, but they was ripping his name off of different buildings mm -hmm. and, and just... The show got yeah. canceled or yeah. oh, they, oh, won't, yeah. they won't allow the show yeah. to be aired. Yeah, and, and my man, oh, what's the comedian... He made a great, great point. Uh, Sinbad. Okay. Sinbad said, yeah, okay, great. Y'all, not great, but, you know, I'm saying y'all trying to go at Bill, but look at all those other actors that had nothing to do with none of that. Because, remember, they get checks every time that thing runs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, you want to get at him, but uh, you putting that's, that's 10, 15 other brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. It was a black show, one of the most popular yeah, times. Yeah. So, it, it's, so it, stepping away from the act, which is a crime. But look at how in, in balance this judicial system and, and it with us it's Weinstein produced well he got movies and all this stuff out nobody talking about yeah, yanking his like stuff. His movies, yeah, like, that didn't even come up yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah he true. shown the, 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 it's not even a topic of conversation yeah, that's true, that's to come true. at his 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 yeah. uh, his creative work. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just him, but how get him, get his show uh, you know what? Let's ban Jello pudding for the next fifty years. Yeah, yeah, I right? mean, it's like this excessive kind of, you know, annihilate. It's just you. You won't. We're gonna to totally destroy you. <laughs> and 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 then you get other folks from other communities commit the same, similar or worse act, and not even a thing on the wrist. They don't even get that. That that would be too severe. 
it's like, hey, this okay. Do better mm-hmm. next time. We yeah, ain't it's coming not at even you. A, com- uh, a conversation on yeah, online. Yeah. No, it's not as big as uh, mm-hmm. the Cosby situation. Um, one thing I've seen online a lot too. Uh, a lot of people debating, talking about, you know, how Cosby is becoming the face of rape. Mm, mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, which is interesting. And man. it's like, it's like, it's, we know that we're not the face of rape. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like uh, uh, slavery itself showed that you know, <laughs> it's been this has been a long time. Like this is this, I mean, this is global uh, conquest for the last 500 years and on every part of this planet. Which which pillage and rape was just uh, par par for the course in that activity. Y- mm-hmm. You know, Europeans have have cornered the market in that activity for yeah the last five hundred years. There's not a place on this planet where that type of behavior was not being exhibited by one group. So so for now to make the face of rape, uh, Bill Cosby, it's it's definitely disingenuous, misleading. And it falls more into the narrative of um, criminalizing the black man, the mm-hmm. black male. On that, I mean, they, they, you know, the other incident, they're they dra- dragging this sister out of a, a Waffle House because she rightfully so disputed being charged 50 cents for the utensils that she's utilizing to eat food she's paid for from that restaurant. So she did what I've done in a few instances where if I've had an issue related to my interaction with a business, I will seek to speak to a manager. If a manager isn't available, what's the number of your corporate headquarters? You know, I have a complaint to make. Mm -hmm. I'm a customer. So that's a normal procedure. As a matter Mm -hmm. of fact, that's a very civilized procedure. You know, so, and for that to have led to this verbal, all the thing, that manager, whoever, okay, this is the number. Sorry, we'll try to serve you better next time. That should have been it. For it to escalate to a verbal confrontation that now leads to police being called. And now this the second offense. Now the police, so the only way to deal with this situation is to physically drag this woman out and, and, and manhandle her in a way that, that has her disrobed and, and part part of, of her body now being publicly shown as she's, you know, treated treated like, like a, a, a bag of garbage being dragged out and, and publicly humiliated. So, so where, where, where is the balance? Where is the justice? That, that act is so similar to an act that had Malcolm X speak on. It was down back during the sit-ins and the, all that stuff. There was a black woman that was caught on camera being brutalized by a police officer. Malcolm X said, said y'all saw it, y'all saw that happen, and y'all, y'all try to act like you didn't see it. And he said, what does that say about us as, as men? You, you know, the kind of stuff I've seen on film, I've seen you know mostly all of this this police officer over a black woman striking her mm-hmm. straddle straddle mm-hmm. on top of her, striking her with one of the most devastating strikes you a hammer fist, a hammer fist directly mm-hmm. on the center of your face. It, it, it's a devastating strike repeatedly. Yeah, Our we've black seen the women. cops with the little girls oh, who my, trying yes. to stop them from fighting and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slamming a fourteen. Yes, a knee on, on the back yeah, like, of a like fourteen-year-old at at a pool event. You got a, a, a two hundred plus pound yeah. burly police got his knee on the back of our daughter. Mm-hmm. We, we, we've seen in our schools our daughter slung. From one side of the room to the other, oh, like no. a rag yeah, doll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The These school. are our children. Mm-hmm. These are our daughters. So, at, so at, at what point? Well, it's going to be a gut check for us, man. They're brutalizing our women. They're brutalizing our children. We know we we've had the the, the uh, target on our back since, since since our arrival. But at what point do we as men say enough is enough? You know, you you you've committed that act for the last time. Mm-hmm. This is going to be our reaction, and it's going to be a reaction in a way that's going to get the kind of attention and get the kind of c- cessation of this kind of behavior. I think it's only going on because there's no penalty. Hey. No, they do it. They're, yeah, hey, they're going to march. They're going to you know get a little upset, but yo, we're going to be right back in the mix doing it again tomorrow. So we got to come up with more more real, real answers to this situation. It seems like the argument or the counter argument to that is always, oh, you guys do it to each other. Right, right. Or you guys are mm-hmm. your own worst enemies mm-hmm. and this, that, and I do. I, 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 I have, you know have heard that's that. Always that. That's <laughs> always, I seem like, the, the, the counter argument. Whenever we speak about the injustices mm-hmm. or things that's happened to us, they always bring it back to, well... You guys lead the murder rate or whatever the case is or you guys abuse each other the most and things like that. 
and then they try to bring up certain examples and stuff I've like heard that. It. And you know, an answer, I'm, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna paraphrase an answer from that that I, that I got from our, our good brother, Captain Tazaria, and, and it fits, it's just so appropriate. Those acts of black on black crime, us killing, brutalizing each other, those are definitely clear and un, unexcusable acts of our dysfunction related to self hate and related to us coming out of this psychological. Uh, mire that we've been in so it's still us doing things to us out of displacement because that anger that rage is not being focused on our true oppressor so yes that needs to be addressed but our brother uh, Captain Zarak said uh, when someone kills us from another community that's an act of war Mm. So one is an act of war, one is an act of dysfunction. So mm. as we heal and get stronger, mm. the incidents of us coming at each other, harming, killing, defrauding, any negative energy we're bringing to each other will begin to minimize and that will get healed as we get healthier. But be, un be unquestionably clear that when someone else from any other community uh, uh, assaults, attacks, or kills us, that's an act of war. And an act of war has to be addressed. If someone is declaring war on you, you have two options. Sit and wait to get wiped out or marshal your forces and start launching counterattacks to to uh, abate the kind of assault that is going on on your people. Mm. Um, going back uh, to the Bill Cosby situation, mm -hmm. um, I've also heard that, you know, he may not face like actual jail time or mm -hmm. things like that, that he... He might uh, be, you know, subject to, like, some type of house arrest or something like that. Mm -hmm. Do you see that as a possibility just for the type of figure he is? Or do you think they're going to try to really put, you him, know, put him in, in jail? It jail? really depends because they try to, you know, the, this Me Too movement and, and how it's flexing its muscle and how it is, it, it's, it's almost, there's an insatiable appetite it has. It is just, it, it's going at people, and, and, and if, if you are guilty of a crime, yes, you need to be brought to justice. But they're saying a lot of people are being swept up into this uh, tsunami of, mm -hmm. of Me Too, and penalties will be greater. There, there are things for better or worse. There, there are societal and even cultural norms that develop, that uh, fade in and that fade out during the era that these acts were were committed there was a cultural norm that included uh, a level of drug interaction consumption various uh levels of sexual uh experimentation weaved with drugs with money with power with those seeking uh stardom it was it, it was a cabal that adults all signed up for, for uh, and, and got different things as a real as a relate as relation to and and you can say they got different things. you can see that how some of those relationships progressed over years if someone truly commits an act on you that offends you to the highest degree how do you continue to interact with that person over 10 15 20 years in a similar way mm. and then and then still try to call it uh, a, a crime against you and not that you know especially you know a male dominated society men have used uh money as far as the economic control over uh if you look at a situation with uh, a spouse or with their interaction with women a boss and and maybe subordinates in in a company so so there's been different interactions based on money power affluence advantage between men and women since the beginning of time and in some instances both sign a contract together based on the acts that that are being done in those instances where someone didn't sign a contract and they were manipulated through again drugs or just put in a situation where they're not able to house themselves or feed themselves when you restrict someone's basic need for survival and the only way you are saying you're going to uh, relieve them of that confinement is for them to yield to you in a, a sexual way or in a way that allows you to uh, have control over them those are acts that at whatever time that it is committed, whatever the, the cultural norm, 60s, 70s, 80s, present day, we have to see that as the backdrop. What agreement, what knowingly did these two people come together to do? And, and then I think the next fair thing to do once you've gotten to that place is what responsibility does each participant have? Now you can put 90 on this side and 10 on this side. 
you could put 30 and 70. I think in many instances, for me, it comes down to 50-50. You know, I, I don't think there's been a weapon in any of this. Mm -hmm. I don't hear anybody. He pulled the gun out. He put it to my head. He was, you know, a lot of the folks came into this dynamic looking to have an opportunity. And they were willing to, in some instances, sell part of their soul to get that opportunity. And, and, and when you, you sell your soul and then somebody comes back to collect, I mean... Oh, well, I didn't mean to do it. I didn't, or this is not how I wanted it to go. I guess you have a right to say that. You're copping out. But at what point do mm -hmm. you not enter that where you're like, oh, who, who is it? I think Nina Nina Simone said related to love. It, it's, it's like no way to get up from the table when love is not being served. Uh, that exit is still there. Mm -hmm. So more people get put one foot in front of the other and go out the door. Yeah. I think that culture of the casting couch and that kind of dynamic there always will be some mm -hmm. but i think it'll be greatly reduced if there wasn't so many willing to take the bait mm -hmm. out of, out of a hunger for stardom and and wishing to be famous and rich and uh i've even like you like going back to dave Chappelle's uh stand up when he talks about you know some com like some people it's like he talks about the industry and how some people you know they feel like victims and things like that but he said, what point, at what point do you get in a meeting and somebody pulls out their penis mm. and you don't walk out? He said, where's, yeah. he said, well, you know, you're an adult too, like, but yeah. if you decide to stay yeah. and you put it in your hand and you do whatever the heck you do, mm. yeah, and mean, then you cry about it later, right. like, oh my God, this is how these people, right. like, why right. didn't you walk out when they first did the crazy shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, and you then, had that chance. Yeah, and I'm talking about, I mean, doing. Now, now, I mean, saying stuff, people, you know, I've had some, some things said, said to me and said to me in a way that was like, yo, and, and, and my response was, 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 was immediate, you, you know, to check it, but to to touch someone like the situation with what is what is the brother who came forward this i think it was uh, what, not once the year i mean the brother's like what six three six six yeah, four whatever big, yeah big, and, and then your size and, and, and he says what he grabbed his his genitals, his genitals. And this, and like, yeah, i don't know at what point is that still a conversation he man? even said at one afterwards well you know what i'm gonna calm down because I don't want to mess up any opportunities. I mean, I mean, which is cool, and and, and I I kind of count myself as an extremely you know restrained brother, kind of level headed, but yeah, I would have been calming down with at least one hand around his throat, yeah. and then as I'm calming down, and I'll be relaxing my fingers, and I think that would have just been in, in, in instinctive, man. But, I don't think there would have been a way to stop that reaction. For, because that's not even a joke. There's some people that joke with you that will hit you on on the back and you know do little. That's there's no joke nowhere near that. Yeah. At the way he described Especially it, if you don't know the person. And yeah, well, like even what, yeah, he even said he you, looked at him, grabbed this thing, looked at him, and said something. And, Yo, yeah. that's like so clear of an offense that an immediate reaction would almost be impossible to not administer and it makes you think how important is your career or whatever you're doing when you have to say you know what let me, i'll let that slide like how yeah, important yeah, is whatever situation yeah, you're I in don't know. you know like know. where it's like you know what i don't care about like yeah, getting yeah. another movie like you just violated me as a person like, yeah yeah like, and, and now i don't want to be hypocritical i can see saying some stuff say no, I, slide. I, yeah. something you can somebody can say something sideways and you can say something like you can be within yourself yeah man, i got my man you out of line yo go go walk it off you drunk or you or i don't know what's on your mind but what you said you need to get away from me mm -hmm. i mean there's a few ways you can verbally get yourself away from something that is verbally said offensive from someone, either being the lead, leading and, and, and trying to give you a level of attention that you're not interested in. But once someone's crossed a physical line, in such a, 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 a grotesque way. Yeah. So I, I, so for me, that, that, that I thought the reactions, I don't know, is that part of the culture now? That people make themselves available and that's how they test out their I think, potential? I think, I think um, with, with Hollywood, it's, it's like you said, it's... A, it, it's basically a common thing now. People know mm. that you got to give something to get something. Mm, mm. And I feel like that's become a, a, a natural thing within mm -hmm. the industry. Now, um, when you look at what Bill Cosby is going through and everything like that, and we've seen so many people outed in the past year uh, from Kevin Spacey, Harvey mm. Weinstein, the father from Seventh Heaven, mm, and a lot that. of these pedophilia mm -hmm, charges, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. um, which is like, I feel like... You know, I understand, like, I'm not saying raping women is any less than, but raping kids and mm, things like mm, that, that's mm. like, 
that's like a whole nother level of animal as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So when you see these guys, Kevin Spacey just went underground and a couple of these dudes who's not being talked about and not being prosecuted in the same level, what do you think? Um, do you think they're going to get their just due or is this something just specifically aimed for the brothers? You know what I'm saying? Stay tuned. I'm wondering. <laughs> and even expand on Kevin, Kevin uh, um, Spacey a, a little. Uh I read uh, on, on uh, one of the journalists did a good story on him. There was a black security guy working on one of the sets that he was working on, and he gave his depiction of what his interaction with uh, Spacey was. He said Spacey was a straight up racist. He mm. said he he never spoke to any of the black personnel, That's crazy. and whenever you know you know security teams they constantly shifting. Whenever shift was caused that had a black personnel posted at his trailer to secure his space, he would always have that person removed and have a, a white personnel replaced by them. And he eventually even on one on one site, this is said by the, the black security person that he used his influence to get them out of a contract that they was working with with that production house for years That's so crazy. so you know this man took he had an outward uh, uh, projection of his 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 bigotry and racism so which is and it, 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 it's so unfortunate he was one of actors man Kevin Spacey seven the usual suspects mm-hmm. his his acting skills is, is crazy mm-hmm. phenomenal actor mm-hmm. I respect his skills but now it's like whoa and, and, and even what what would you say what happens to that when there's an artist or there's an athlete or there's a performer who you like what they do on the court you like their lyrics mm-hmm. you like their songs but something in their personal life is so egregious so how how would you how do how you do divide you it that? do you now turn off do you now deny your 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 genuine like of you you can like a sound so now I, I can't like that music anymore because the person who sings it or even you know look at the r kelly mm-hmm. sit, sit, do you still yeah, dance yeah, you still pop to his still, music yeah people are still yeah. how are people still buying his yeah. tickets to go to his yeah, concerts yeah yeah or, or even <laughs> let's 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 take it someplace else let's take it like this a restaurant owner mm-hmm. restaurant owner gets caught for doing some act that societally societally is just unacceptable but the food you you've been eating there every week. The food is phenomenal. Do you okay? Is it a principal stand? I will never go to there because the owner of there, or just like okay, I'm not gonna say nothing to the owner, but I, I still like that food. I'm mm-hmm. gonna go eat the food. Or Kelly, I would never go to a concert. I'll never go to this, but I'm gonna pop a CD in and I'm gonna be pop. I'm gonna give you even a realer uh, uh, example. Uh, H&M puts the coolest monkey in the thing, but it everybody was shopping at H&M. Yeah. The quality of clothes was nice and cheap. And yeah, it was good quality and mm-hmm. things like that. Mm-hmm. Do you still? Are you up at eight? You know, any black person you see at H and M, you gotta take a picture. Like you going against yeah, the people, dog. Right. Like you know what I'm so, saying. But it's like it becomes that. But yeah, I mean, I, I so, feel like um, I feel like in, in life, man, um, we can't always put too much on people because mm-hmm. you know I feel like people will are human. Humans have uh, faults, yeah, and yeah. everyone will let you down at one point. You know what yeah. I'm saying from some aspect. You know, uh, no one's perfect. No one, you know, people try to accuse my Martin Luther King mm. of certain things, and you know, uh, but you know, certain things that don't, you know, you can't take away from certain people for right, what they right, did. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, these, I think, you kind of have to accept the whole person. Mm-hmm. But now, and interesting enough, now you said did. Let's and okay, great. Something 30, 40 years in your past. I guess time does do some things. But let's say someone currently doing something, yeah. currently involved in an activity that's not acceptable. Yeah. But they still make good music. But they still are a great actor. But yeah. they still are philanthropic. They donate to schools and to hospitals. They still ran into a house and saved two babies. But then next week they was. It but less than so, so, so it, it's just the human dynamic yeah, is so complex. I don't know how you deal with that. I think it's a very uh, psychological. Uh, it's a very psychological type of th- thing. Mm. I think it messes people up with it a little mm-hmm, bit. Mm-hmm. You know, um, that's a hard thing to deal with. Well, I like to toss it to our viewers. For those of you yeah. who, who come to Kia <laughs> Life Productions yeah. and spend the time to write, how do you deal with that contradiction? Yeah, we need to know. Of enjoying an art form, enjoying something that someone produces, but knowing full well that something about that person in their personal life, in their personal behavior, is unacceptable. And you know, even a running joke uh, that I seen was Kevin Spacey, damn, he got caught up. Now I guess I can't see the rest of the House of Cards. 
Oh my goodness! That's what now, now you can't see. So, so I guess they're saying that that was the worst thing to come to come. Yeah, provided. you know, now he's doing this. Now we can't even see him. The show was so good. Yeah. Now we can't see the rest of the show because of these allegations. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's you know how do we how do we we deal with? It? Well, I what mean, does it say about us as the people? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, for is me, that, yeah. I hate I hate a certain R. Kelly song. I like his music is good. Yeah, I believe and, I can fly. Yeah. It, well, every time I hear it, then I was like, wow. It's like, wow. So yeah, you got to look at it two different yeah, ways. Yeah, yeah. And then where where is forgiveness? Yeah. I mean, it, it, are there some people that are beyond forgiveness? Eh, no, we can never forgive you. You just you went so far, and that's just forgiveness ain't an option. Mm -hmm. Or if everyone is entitled to forgiveness. Who dispenses it, and, and when? When is it? You know. I think. I think it comes to the also. It also comes to the realization that these companies, Hollywood, the music industry, they're run by some very satanic, evil people. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I'm not saying everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always these people with good intentions, but when you have something created by someone who, who is out here to take advantage of people, who's mm -hmm. not really looking for the best interest mm -hmm. of the group. You know, for the most part, the music, the television industry, they're not run by black people or people mm -hmm. who come from poor neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. They come from wealthy, affluent people who's probably had a lot of things throughout their life. And they've been, you know, they've been living some sick type of lives that are normal to them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I agree. Like, I agree. you know, like, you know, like, it's hard to speak on homosexuality because they make it such a crazy thing. But, you know, it, it's a whole other side of the world that doesn't mm -hmm. believe in homosexuality. Yeah. We don't hate. Yeah. People that are homosexual, but right. we feel like you know, it is That's uh, not act a against part of nature. nature. Exactly. You know, uh, it can't bring any life. It's a pra a death practice. Right. You right. know. So right. now, you know, I feel like with the, with all of these things, even some good people may have been good in the beginning, but went into it and they discovered the reality of mm -hmm. what they're doing or where they're at, mm -hmm. who these people are. Mm -hmm. You know, some of these artists are pure artists. They love making music, but right. then they get into the industry. Mm -hmm. And then they deal with uh, pro uh, producers who says, do this mm -hmm. or get it the F out. Or mm -hmm. they, they, they get spoiled. I told you about the video game. You know how the condition with the basketball game. And it's like, you know, we're playing for fun, but then you got this executive who's like, you want my to wear my shoe? Watch your mouth. You know what I'm saying? And then you're like, this is the first time I ever got spoke to like this. Mm. I didn't even know where I, like, then you start realizing the industry you're in. And you realize, okay, the industry might be a little sicker than I thought. Mm -hmm. You know, you open certain doors mm -hmm. that you weren't used to. And we see these stories come out. I'm not saying that, you know, it's all, all the conspiracies that are exact, right and exact. But we know there's a level of Satanism that goes into this stuff. You know, there's yep. a level yep. of sickness that's in these industries. And I'm not talking about now. I'm talking about since the beginning. Since the in inception of a mm -hmm. lot of these things, since mm -hmm. the inception of Hollywood, the inception of these major music industries, and so I feel like um, I feel like there's probably a story about every single person mm. that we we think is great, you know. Uh, like you said, some people have to sell certain things to get to certain positions. Yeah. Who knows what's behind there? You know. I mean, like you said, all these people are nice, philanthropic, but there's two sides to every story. Exactly. And there's always the the rabbit hole always goes deeper than you think. Yeah. So what's being shown to us is what they need us to see, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, even when it's bad, you know, but like Cosby was the father of America mm -hmm. and now he's the number one face of rape. Ugh. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a game. I uh -huh. think it's still a game being played, you know, to mess with our mentality, mm -hmm, to mess mm -hmm. with us, mm -hmm. you know, oh, don't trust these black people mm -hmm. in a sense. Cause it's like, look, if Cosby could, you know, Cosby, yeah. the father yeah. of America, you know what I'm saying? This is how these people roll. Like I feel yeah. like that, that's the that's the type of message they're sending without mm -hmm. having to say it. Mm -hmm. and, you know? and, I've, and I've said this before, and I'm gonna, it's yours. No, and I'm going to have to repeat it again. The way you control a a a society is through the military, the media, and the money. Mm -hmm. The military, the media, and the money. You get those three on lockdown. You got virtual control over any society nation and with the media let's look at what was hollywood's first blockbuster big seller that it, it, it woke up what that what that what that demonic spirit was that was birth of a nation I was just about to say you it. know that was viewed in the white house mm -hmm. it, it was raved it was finally the truth of our story mm -hmm. and they took very copious notes as to the reaction 
to it each place it aired. There was riots every place that movie was shown. Mm. Bodies were, 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 were piled up in places. Okay. There were these outbursts of lynchings. Because look at what was being depicted. Wow. So, so they knew our uh, cause and effect. They did the other thing with uh, flashing the big uh, popcorn, flashing a pitch of a soda in one one eighth of a second. And they saw sales go up. So this, this is 50, 60 exactly. years ago. Exactly. So the science are like, whoa, we got something here, guys. So now instead of making sales for popcorn and, and instead of just uh, stoking people's racism and bigotry, they said we can shape political views. We can we can move needles either way we want. Mm -hmm. Move it towards nature or move it away from nature. Mm -hmm. We control what they think, what they see, what they feel based on that media imagery mm -hmm. that we can shape and plant in their subconscious. Give them heroes and tear them down. Yes. So so they knew that then. We, we can't even imagine a level of science that's at now. They got it down to they they are just guiding and manipulating. The only way you can you can save yourself from it is to unplug. Unplug. Mm. The more you stay up in it, the more you give your your consciousness access to their programming. I think the more uh, we are less able to fulfill our own purposes mm -hmm. as a collective and our agenda stays on the back burner while we're, okay, who's in the playoff? Okay, what happened on mm -hmm. this show? Where is, you know, pop culture driven type attention? It, it's it, That's not going to be the things that move a people or a progressive society forward. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, getting back to the books, getting back to subject matter that means things. If you are going to tune in to stuff, tune in to things like Kia Life Production. Get information uh, from non-traditional sources. Uh, the truth will lie more in those areas than it ever could be on this media driven uh, juggernaut that just constantly cranks out misinformation and um, things designed to keep people just functioning as robots. No, real talk. I mean, the the game is uh, they create certain things, they put things in front of our face, mm -hmm. and they give us a false uh, reality of what we think we want for ourselves. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And, so, and the crazy thing is, they make us think it's our idea. Exactly. That's and how that's, deep it that's is. The, that's the most important you thing. You know, we think, oh, I came up with that on my own. Mm -hmm. Not knowing they have plans and blueprints on 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 on, on, on blackboards and, mm -hmm. and notes 10 it's years a, this ago. This will affect at least 90% of the population. Yes. 90% yes. of the population going to go out and go buy this thing. I'm yes. telling you. Yes. Because we, we know we did the yes. test. Yes. There's a 10% that won't get it yeah. because they're they're a little bit, you And know, for that 10, we got a backup Yeah, plan. we got a yeah. backup for them. We know what they're going to eat. We uh -huh. know what they're going to drink. We know what toilet tissue uh -huh. they're going to use, what toothpaste they're going to brush with. Oh, you want to be vegan? Okay, we're yeah. going to create this whole new v GMO vegan for you guys then. Okay. You guys yes. want to get away? Oh, you guys want to get natural? Then we'll fake natural everything. And put natural on it, and you'll feel good. We'll put organic on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if, if your rudder isn't aimed towards the truth at all times, because like a rudder of a boat, it has to readjust. You have to, because waves are coming at you. You got to hold that rudder on that course if you want to get to a place that's going to be meaningful. Mm -hmm. And the truth is your goal. You, you know, you can't be just taken with all the uh, innuendos and the different media driven concepts and narratives that are pushed on us especially about our history about our people anything that the media is telling you about a black person prominent or not if you don't immediately begin to at least question and come up with the message to research and get the truth yourself you're going to be on a path that you're being programmed and conditioned to go down rather than a path that's going to serve you individually or that's going to serve us collectively as a people so we really got to protect protect our consciousness a lot better in my opinion yeah and i, I just want to leave the people with uh a lot of this information i know when i used to get into a lot of information i used to feel like there's no hope or you know mm -hmm. everything is under control so what's the point but you know at the end of the day we still have the opportunity and the power because just the thought just with the thought we could change our reality so mm, mm. at the end of the day we definitely can't allow you know that to control everything mm -hmm. and you know uh the main thing i feel like too is you know the money aspect everybody wants money you know what mm -hmm, i'm saying mm -hmm. and you know people do almost anything to get to that money regardless if it's selling their soul or risking their freedom mm, you know what i'm saying mm, either or mm. you know you behind bars you know, whether it's literally or you're behind some type of, you know, imaginary bars where you just feel locked in mm. a space where you can't get out, whether it's a contract right, or, right, you know, right. something like that, where you're locked into something that mm -hmm. you didn't really think you are, you weren't ready for. Because when you're in that jail cell, 
you sitting back like, damn, that wasn't even worth it. Yes. And you see, yes. like, a lot of the people, you know, they get millions of dollars. Some of them are unhappy and feel like, you know what? I've even heard a certain entertainer say, well, it was, we, we, it was, I was happier before the money. Like, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. Like, before the money, it was love. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, But yeah. now it's like it's something else, you know? Right. And, and people think it just happens, you know, to the little guy, to the small. I mean, look what people forget what Prince went through. When, when he was the artist formerly known as Prince. Yeah, yeah. When he had to go as an image. When he put a slave on mm-hmm. his face. Yeah, yeah, He was screaming it out then. Yeah. Now, you know, ain't, ain't nobody safe from this. If you don't be careful how you position yourself, you will be owned. You know, even with, with Cosby. I, mm-hmm. I still, to this day, I think he made some enemies in places that put a lot of this in, in, in motion that led to this. Mm-hmm. The wealthy... The powerful rarely see the insides of jail cells unless they've offended or in some way run afoul of someone more wealthy and more powerful. Or there's an example being met. This thing keeps coming up, his his, his attempt to buy uh, the TV network. And they yeah, said that CBS opened the door. Or NBC, uh, yeah. NBC. So it's, it's, how dare he? And so what? <laughs> they're going to they gonna kill his son and just... It just Beat him out of out of. Yeah. It's just how far does that go? If that is the impetus, yeah. and, and I don't know what it is, but somebody has been on this, on on this path of trying to get this man uh, uh, convicted, and hopefully, or or or, or someone is, is has been. I say one. It could even be an entity that mm-hmm. has been nurturing and looking for different ways to to get mm-hmm. at Bill Cosby mm-hmm. for an extended period of time. Maybe as time progresses, we're going to eventually know which fingerprints are on it, but I don't think this is organic and this is just the judicial system doing what it does. Yeah. He's being selectively singled out. Some may say uh, justifiably so. I'm not even you know throwing anything against that camp. I'll give you the right to hold that, but when we as black people see a black person be judged by a separate set of rules, that is in itself should have us uh, join forces to see to it that we just as black people are not being victimized. If there That's are true. this crim- criminality that has been proven, there should be an opportunity to pay. If that is jail time, was that retribution financially? We just want a fair trial like everybody yeah, else, man. Yeah, fair. Don't let somebody man. probably somebody out there right now got the same situation as Bill Cosby's name being brought up oh, to no man. justice. Yes. So it's like it's just about a fair trial. That's why yeah. I was happy that OJ won. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, people, it, they, it gets to that point where it's like you happy, celebrating, even if he wrong. You like, you know what? At least we got one. Yeah, you know, we tired yeah, of y'all yeah. getting one on us. Yeah, he wrong. We know he did it, but you know what? Justice was finally served. And I don't <laughs> even know he did it. I keep saying yeah, that. I mean, there's enough yeah. evidence, but him winning was like we. That wasn't the outcome that we're used to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So exactly. for that, so people don't understand. Especially him, like you know, with the death of two white people and. It's just, like, oh, that's the, the justice was fine. It doesn't so happen that time. way for us. So, so, yeah, the, and, yeah. the, and I know other communities. I remember one of one of the. Uh, it wasn't even a, a, a split screen they did. Or well, I remember when the verdict was 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 uh, read of O.J. Simpson not guilty, <laughs> and they had a room literally. I don't know how it got that way. Yeah, it was yeah. like half was black, yeah, I, and half I was remember, white. And at the moment, not guilty went the black one. Ah, yeah, white people crying. White was uh, quiet or silent. Still, not emotion. Uh-huh. And it was like the well, best was, ones were the ones where they were in the same room together, like in the black. That's were what I'm to, talking about. Next to the white people, yeah. And then the white oh, people man. sitting there turning around, looking at the black people, like, how could you celebrate this? Yeah, it, it was it, it was very very polarized, uh-huh. very very. Polarized. I even seen this week where the guy was like, yeah, in your face mm, type like type mm. of thing, like yeah. <laughs> that's what and you, many say from that time to this, that resentment is they didn't march, they didn't rally, they didn't they went out, and that's when you saw the number. Numbers even increase mm-hmm. more of the incarceration, more prison, prison of the brutality, everything, yeah. more building of so cells. So we get we get a little win. It, just know that it's coming with a big. Yeah, uh, they coming to the clean right. house after this one, right? Yeah, here. we express our dissatisfaction, anger, frustration, contempt in, in often predictable ways. You know, mm-hmm. we're going to march. We're going to rally. You know, Sharpton's going to pop up at some point yeah. if he's called in. If not, you know, the normal cast of characters, and then it's it's. A hyperbolic for a while, and then you, you, you know, tangible movements. And, and, and don't get me wrong, the family may be compensated, and and some appeasements may be made. But, but then the next offense is days, days away. Yeah. So the situation is not being improved. It's just a matter of very small 
tokenism kind of being done related to atrocities. Yeah. You take the life of a family member of someone, they're never coming home again because what? You know, they, they turned the wrong way. You thought they had a this, they had a cone, they had a cell phone, and now that's a death sentence because they're encountering a law enforcement personnel over and over again. No, nah, it's, it's, it's something we really have to come to grips with and address in a serious way as a people. Nah, uh, real talk, but it's more, I mean, it's definitely a, a great breakdown today, man. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue to follow this and see what happens to the brother yes. Bill Cosby. Yes, You know, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to see, man. This justice system mm -hmm. is definitely uh, a weird situation. It's never mm -hmm. been fair to black people. And uh, hopefully, you know, as we move forward, we can see some changes. Yes, I'm definitely <laughs> hoping so. And even a as we wrap up, definitely want to uh, mention I did a great in interview uh, on Black News 102 with brother Omawali Clay. Mm -hmm. He's on his way to Zimbabwe. Okay. And upon his return, I definitely want to have him here as well on, on Kia Life Productions to give us an update. And another date I want to put out, folks, to keep in mind, we're beating the drum on September 5th. 2018 it will be the 20th anniversary of the first million youth march called by the honorable dr khalid abdul muhammad i mentioned that to our, our brother omawali clay the, the 712 movement i want other grassroots movements we got to come together and put something that's going to acknowledge what that man tried to do coming up on two decades ago and also bring those issues right back to the forefront we got champions like dr umar johnson uh we have uh jeff gardier we have a few brothers and a uh, uh, joy joy leary dr joy leary a uh, few people have uh uh um uh, kinjufu brother kinjufu uh, there's a few other names Ooh, i don't want to leave anyone out but a few folks have been on the front line with uh raising these issues so Keep that on the calendar, September 5th, 2018. Something big will be done to mark uh, what was one of the most monumental movements for our young people ever put together. Uh, that was by Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad. So keep uh, abreast, keep tuned in to Keo Life Productions. We will give you an update as to where the location. I'm almost certain it's going to be here in New York, but that has to be something that people have to come out to honor and just uplift that brother's name and his mission of saving and uh, salvaging the future for our young people. Black leaders, use the stove to heat us, powdered eggs and government cheeses. The calendars with Martin, JFK, and Jesus. Gotta be fresh to go to school with fly sneakers. Schools with outdated books. We are the forgotten. Summer's cooling off by the fire hydrant. Yeah, I'm from the ghetto. With old black women talking about this shit.